Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week we're hearing that the offshore fishing just continues to evolve and get more and more interesting. Uh, we're hearing that the race has been loaded with bass this week. We are hearing that the Benito are filling into Rhode Island and being caught with more regularity. And we're hearing that the fluke fishing out around, the, out around Block Island has reignited, looking much better this week. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's Web Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. All right, let's start things off with, uh, with that tuna bite and that offshore bite that I was talking about that's really it's become very interesting over this past week. Um, so, yeah, those fish are still out at the claw. And they're still out in the gully. Uh, they moved around a little bit. Uh, so some of those some of those fish of the claw have moved up to the northeast corner of the claw this week. Um, the fish are out, were out in the gully, and that even slowed down for a couple days. Um, they seem to have moved a little south of where they were. Uh, so that's been sort of the two big reports that I've heard. Uh, still a lot of those football and school size fish out there. I'm also hearing about fish at uh, Tuna Ridge, and I'm hearing about fish at the dump. And then over at the Ranger Wreck as well, and that's where the first little interesting tidbit comes from. We've been hearing about some yellowfin from there. Um, and then kind of headed back over into Rhode Island, um, well, Rhode Island waters. The uh, guys fishing the weed lines and the high flyers out there are finding some mahi out there. Uh, my friend Christian Aw of Ostruck Charters sent me this picture of him with a white marlin that he caught out there. And that fish was caught in a striper rod. Uh, they just saw it up on the surface and cast a bait to it and hooked up and he landed it. Um, and that's not the only marlin I've heard about there either. So that's, it's, that's what's been making things really interesting. It's just the wide array of species that are starting to show up out there. The sharking's been really good too. There's been some nice makos taken. Uh, there have been some albies taken out that way. Um, and then the really big... Uh, really big giant tuna have still been east of the Cape. Regal Sword, uh, Crab Ledge, guys are getting them on big mackerel uh, live lined out there. Um, and I mean, there's almost no limit to the size of the fish that they're getting out there, but it's just been phenomenal. Um, the smaller tuna back, you know, back this way, you know, from the vineyard to block to Montauk, that's still a troll bite. I uh, haven't heard of many guys casting to them at all. Side trackers and other trolled uh, setups are what's getting it done and um you know there have been some bigger fish out there i don't have numbers off the top of my head no one's given me an exact size but there have been some big ones there's been some you know fish classified as giants out there um but a lot of these fish are that football to school size 20 to 50 pounds uh really fun on stand-up gear and uh the guys are still getting a lot of them and they're just having a blast and then I'm um, just going to do the same thing with the porgies, just sort of keep repeating myself over and over again. That scup bite, porgy bite, has been awesome again this week from the vineyard to Buzzards Bay, all throughout Rhode Island, all throughout Connecticut, into New York waters. Um, you can get them in five feet of water, you can get them in 70 feet of water. Um, the only place that guys are having a better time finding bigger ones is just targeting like hard structure, like a wreck or a big gnarly rock pile. Um, and the other thing that is helping guys catch their limit is chumming. Um, not everybody's doing it, but, you know, the guys that chum are doing better than the average. Uh, so those, that's, you know, that's the breakdown of what I would do if I was looking to get on some porgies. Uh, it's a great fishery if you're looking for food for the table. It's also a phenomenal fishery for kids. You know, you want to get them into the idea of fishing. It's fast action, easy to catch, and they fight pretty good for a small fish. Um, if you're looking to get in on that action, I wouldn't wait. It's it's red hot right now. Moving over into Massachusetts now, uh, let's start up on the North Shore with Stripers and talk to James Jukes. He said it was a tough week this week. Um, he said that full moon really made it hard for the surf guys. Um, the few guys that did do well seemed to said that the fish seemed to be uh, showing a preference for white. So white sluggos were really popular. White swimming plugs were really popular. Uh, this fish he sent me a picture of here from his buddy was a uh, was caught in a white sluggo. Boat guys had it a little bit better. Um, they were drifting uh, with live eels in 25 to 50 feet of water, um, hitting some prime edges, some prime structure, and, and getting some nice fish, but still no real giants. He didn't hear about any like monsters this week, no 40s. Um, but these fish were 
you know, 20 to 25 pound class at the one pictured here. Uh, one place that did have some really big fish were those were the islands off of Boston. Uh, tube and worm was popular for the daytime guys, as was live lining mackerel or pogies. Uh, but the most popular way and the best way to get a big one was just drifting with a three weight eel around some of these islands. Um, fishing some of that tide swept places where the current really starts to move. Um, they'd be getting some bigger fish in those areas. It's probably the best place in Massachusetts that I heard about this week to get a big striper. Um, out on the Cape, the, the, the hottest zone for stripers has been from like Marconi Beach down to like the middle of Nauset. So you figure like Northeast Ham to Orleans. Uh, and it's kind of been that classic bite. Like during the day, the, ba the uh, boat guys are doing really well. They're getting them on a variety of lures, but some of the most popular have been like fishing Ron Z's down in the bottom. Um, in, you know, find the school of fish and just dropping it down and kind of vertical jigging them. Uh, but they're getting them various methods, throwing soft plastics into rips and um, fishing live bait, even some top water. Then, you know, night falls, the boat guys go to bed and get their beauty sleep, and uh, the surf guys go out and stay up all night, and they're, they're doing really well. Uh, the only thing that's not classic about this bite is the size of the fish. There's no 40 and 50 pound fish that I'm hearing about. Uh, there's a lot of those cookie cutter fish, like 24 to 34 inch fish, and then there's uh, some bigger fish from like 36 to 38, 39 inches. You might touch 20 pounds with your biggest fish of the night. Um, Slender baits have been the key. Needlefish, uh, hydro minnows, mag darters, uh, red fins, uh, sluggos, things of that nature. Uh, must be a sand deal bite, but the bite's been pretty good. You just got to kind of move around until you find a pile of fish and then hey, just start whaling away on them. And, um, you know, everyone that I talked to seems pretty happy about it. Um, the other place that had, this had a pretty good bite for surf guys has been the north side of the vineyard. Um, I've heard of some fish there from 25 to 35 pounds. Um, mostly taken on plugs, which I, which is always refreshing to hear. I mean, you're getting them on eels too, but needlefish, darters, um, and plastic swimmers have been getting it done as well. South side of the vineyard has been mostly bluefish and, uh, also a lot of brown sharks out there. Some of the, uh, surf guys fishing for brown sharks have had fish over a hundred pounds this week. Uh, same could be said for some of the beaches, um, some of the South Cape beaches as well. Um, just make sure you follow the rules on that because um, there are some, some of these species of sharks are uh, federally protected and they should not be taken out of the water, even, even for a photograph. You know, you're supposed to unhook them and release them in the water. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And then kind of coming around uh, to the Elizabeths, there have been some nice fish taken, you know, Woods Hole, Quicks Hole, Robinson's Hole. Um, but it's been far from a guarantee. Uh, three weight live eels, fish and bucktails, those have been two popular ways to get fish in there. Um, chunking has also been popular, but it's, uh, it's not a lock and load thing. These guys are moving around and looking for fish, but the ones that they're finding tend to be on the larger side. It's, it's, uh, it's one of those fisheries that's meant for the hardcore guy, you know, a guy that, that fishes those areas every night and doesn't mind you know, putting in three nights to get his five nice fish for the week. But um, if you've got that in you, you might find a good one. Inside Buzzards Bay proper, it's been mostly schoolies, and they're mostly up in the bays, you know, so Mattapoiset Harbor, uh, Marion Harbor, Buttermilk Bay, um, and the approaches to those areas have had some smaller bass, and then the canal was really quiet this week. Um, it's been mostly a nighttime jigging game this week, or eel drifting game, and, uh, you know, even, even with that, um, it's the guys have been grinding for just a few fish uh so you know that's the nature of the canal these days it's just not not what it once was uh, but that's pretty much the striper story in massachusetts fluke wise i still didn't get many reports from nantucket shoal this week actually i got none uh, but the place that i've been hearing about fluke is inside buzzards bay uh, the old canal channel has got some fluke uh, mashney flats has got some fluke uh, some of these deeper holes out by the Elizabeth Islands has got them. And then moving over into Vineyard Sound, same deal. Uh, but the keeper ratios are vastly skewed in, in the wrong direction. So you're going to be weeding through tons of shorts to get your few keepers. But, you know, the action's been decent. So we got to kind of weigh the scale on that. Um, sea bass has been decent uh, inside the bay, but 
mostly just in those deeper holes but if you if you're really looking for them it's that same zone again nomans over to the vineyard and then kind of running back toward the elizabeth islands um in that little rectangle triangle whatever you want to call it um that's been the zone to have your best shot at getting a limited sea bass and you're going to get some scup in there as well and the only other thing that I've really heard from Mass is just that the fresh the freshwater fishing continues to be really good for bass on the Cape and um, and you know in Plymouth area too. Uh, it's been a lot of guys have been doing really well at night, you know. So they're going out with frogs, they're going out with wake baits, they're going out with whopper ploppers, and um, you know they're getting a few nice ones, but mostly it's it's just a change of pace. You know, you put your bugs around, you float around, you catch a few two pounders, you might you might bust four. Um, but the bite's been pretty good, and uh, I see no reason why it shouldn't continue to, to be pretty good. Moving over into Rhode Island, uh, the striper bite has been centered around two areas, at least if you're looking for the bigger ones. Um, Block Island has been by far the place to be. Fishing Southwest Ledge, or even up closer to the island with live eels, um, soft plastic eels on lead. Those are all getting it done. Um, but also there's been some really nice fish off of Newport, like Brenton Reef, and then over to like Kettle Bottom. And even heading out over toward uh, Point Judith in that little zone there, there's been some really nice fish taken, uh, you know, even some fish up into the 40 pound class. They are finding some top water action during the early morning and late evening. Um, and you might, you know, you might get a big one there, but most of those fish are more like 30 inches to 40 inches. But, um, but that bite's been pretty good and there's been some really big blue fish mixed in with them. You know, some blues up into the mid teens actually. Um, Heading over towards the breachways in that way, it's been a little slower this week. The fish have been on the average smaller, but there's been some better fish, you know, in the sugar reef area. And then also over in New York waters off, you know, in the race has been, has had a lot of bass. So it's probably only a matter of time before some of those fish slide into the breachway area. So, you know, if that's your home turf, uh, just keep the foot on the gas. You know, you got to have a couple slow nights here and there to have the good ones. Uh, fluke wise, it has modulated back to Block Island. Block was a little slower last week, and now it's picked up again. We're seeing some uh, seeing some reports of like eight to nine pound fish being taken in the windmills. Uh, haven't heard as much from the east grounds this week, but I'm sure there's some fish there on our side. You know, over on the uh, beaches, a lot of shorts. You know, like twenty to one uh, shorts to keepers this week is what I've been hearing. Uh, one little thing that I did hear is that fishing after the draggers come through, believe it or not, has been firing the bite up a little bit better. So that might be something to keep in mind. Um, I've also heard of some bigger fish off of Beavertail and Newport, um, but these guys that are getting those fish are short drifting over prime structure. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit more of a grind style fishing, but it is a good way to get some big ones if you've got a few uh, numbers that tend to give up a good fish. Might be worth giving it a shot. Sea bass fishing has been really good in all the deep water. So from Fort Wetherill out to Beaver Tail, and then you know out south to Brenton Reef, that whole area has got a lot of sea bass. All those little humps and bumps out off of Point Judith, like out south of the center wall, has got them. And then out at Block Island has been phenomenal. There's been a lot of a lot of nice ones taken, a lot of big knuckleheads taken out there. Um, a lot of the charter guys say that the sea bass have been saving the day because the fluke fishing has been so inconsistent and unreliable. And then, of course, you know, lots of guys are running from Rhode Island to go after those tuna that I talked about more in the intro. Um, so overall, I mean, the fishing has been really good in Rhode Island. I'm going to toss it over now to Mike Wade from uh, Watch Your Outfitters. He's going to give us a little rundown of what's happening out their way. Hey, guys, it's Mike Wade, Watch Your Outfitters, checking in for the week. Definitely seeing some differences in bait right now. Big hickory shad coming up and down the river. Definitely a big fish, really good baits. If you like to kind of get out there and do a little light tackle fishing, fun to catch. The other thing that we have going on is some small peanut bunker. Really little guys right now coming out of the estuaries all the way through Kwani, Weekapog. They're all getting pushed out. So you might want to think about throwing some smaller baits out front. Speaking of some hickory shad, Harrison was out last week having a little fun with a little combo, a little Star Wars guy. He's having a blast with it, just really light tackle, catching some hickory shad, catching some small schoolies. Him and his girlfriend are out on the paddleboard having a great time. We're also seeing some pretty good sized black sea bass. I was out with Tommy Logan last week, 
had a great time with Paul Dietrich and the gang. We did a little tuna fishing, and then we went after some black sea bass as a bycatch, put some meat on the table. The other thing that we've got going on is some nice fluke. Block Island seems to be producing some bigger fish, so if you get out there, definitely look at Block Island for some bigger fluke. The other thing that we're seeing right now, guys, is big max going on, so mackerel. Uh, pretty big pattern. Some of the guys are coming in picking up some sabiki rigs. Definitely need a pretty good size sabiki rig for it. And we typically put on the back of the end some uh, little cast mast or a little hoagie or something like that just to give it some weight and cast to those fish. Tight lines on the water. Hope you have a great week. Let's just do a quick rundown of what's going on in the Coastal Kayak Clash this week. Um, we had one really impressive entry come in this week from Rashawn Williams. He uh, topped the fluke category with a 31-incher. It's going to be a tough one to beat up there. Uh, that gives him three points for the tournament and uh, puts him well within striking distance of the uh, of first place with just a couple of quick entries. He could, uh, he could overtake everybody. Uh, the other thing that we had was, a, was an upgrade to the Sea Robin, uh, the third-place Sea Robin for Bob Wagner. Uh, it doesn't change the points at all, but it just kind of solidifies that position for him with a 16.5-incher. And the leaderboard didn't change. We still have a three-way tie for first place. The other thing that was kind of fun, though, is that we got a few entries finally for the, um, for the Fish of the Month. And Bob Wagner right now is leading that with an 18.25-incher. And not too far behind him is Ken Stark with his 17.75-incher. Uh, there's still time to uh, to get that July fish of the month and certainly plenty more time to find your way to the top of the leaderboard in the CKC. Uh, get your entries in as soon as you can. As we move over into Connecticut, the bass fishing really fired up this week in the race. Um, and it's been a... All sizes are represented is what I'm trying to say. So in the daytime, guys are getting them on diamond jigs. They're getting them on bucktails. They're throwing topwaters up into some of the rips and around some of the um, you know places like Valiant Rock and stuff like that and they're getting a lot of like 24 to 34 inch fish a lot of um, a lot of slot fish a lot of keeper fish you know take home fish in the mix there uh, after dark guys three weighing bucktails three weighing eels or kind of moving in tight and slinging some eels up into the rocks you're getting some bigger fish you're getting some fish up into the 40 pound class and that's to be expected um, it's also a great time to, to drive a tube and worm around um, and, and you can find some really nice fish in that area that way as well. Um, but that's, like I said, it's pretty typical. That's when I expect to see these fish show up. You know, I'm doing the Connecticut report for the last decade plus. I mean, you always see it around this moon and there's no reason why it shouldn't continue. Uh, another place that has pretty good numbers of bass are the points and reefs outside the Connecticut River. Inside the river, the mouth itself seems to be more big bluefish. Uh, but outside, um, if, you, if you bounce around from like Black Point to Hatchets and Cornfield and some of these lesser, smaller reefs, um, you're going to find some bass. Eels are going to be your best method to getting them. Uh, as you head west from there to like Six Mile and Southwest, a lot of bass over there as well. Um, I, could, I talked to TJ and he said that they had, that the bass bite kind of came roaring back this week. Uh, seeing a lot of slot and just over slot fish so like 30 to 40 inch fish um being caught in a variety of methods you know from bait to trolling to throwing eels to throwing top waters um those fish are in and um and the bite's been good and then out in the western sound i it's been it's been a nighttime chunk thing i'm gonna let max tell you more about that at the end of this video um but it's it's definitely slowed down out west as well uh, there have been some big blues out that way, um, and I, uh, as I mentioned before, there's been some big blues at the mouth of the Connecticut River. Uh, smaller blues have been harder to rely on, but you can find them in the gut, you can find them at Six Mile, um, and you can find them just kind of motoring around during the day and looking for birds. The fluke bite in Connecticut has been pretty uninspiring. Um, the best fluking has been at like Black Point and then kind of off of Niantic Bay. Uh, that seems to be the, the zone where the best reports I'm hearing are coming from, but it's still tons of shorts to your keep to your one keeper. Um, and Isabella was really slow this week. Uh, so if I were if I were steaming out of uh, the Thames or out of the Connecticut River this week or out of Niantic Bay, 
I just top off the tank and head to Block Island or Montauk. That just seems to be the better zone for fluking overall. And then sea bass wise, um, we are seeing some in that same zone, you know, off of Niantic, kind of over to Six Mile Reef, just that middle area of, um, of Long Island Sound has got the best sea bass fishing. I haven't heard of anything really big this week. The bigger fish have all been coming from Block Island and Montauk, but I've seen a lot of solid fish up to about four pounds. Um, I know that the Sunbeam and the Black Hawk have been doing well. Um, I don't know exactly where they're fishing, but they've been getting some decent ones. And uh, other reports that I've heard have uh, from uh, private anglers have been telling me the same thing. You know, that the sea bass bite has been pretty good and jigs have been working really well. And then as far as the exotic species, you know, over in Rhode Island, and I think I forgot to mention this in the Rhode Island report, so I'm just going to put it here. Um, we are seeing bonito and chub mackerel spreading throughout the state now, um, and I have heard of a lot of them being caught uh, all from boats so far, but anywhere from Watch Hill over to Brenton Reef, uh, guys are finding them and they're getting them on uh, you know, epoxy jigs and hoagie heavy jigs and things like that. Same thing with the chub max, except you're just going way smaller, so it's going to be the smallest uh, hoagie heavy or a fly um, or a fly on a casting egg or a fly thrown with the fly rod. Um, but we are seeing some of those chub max move into uh, Long Island Sound now. So I'm kind of crossing my fingers and hoping that it won't be long before some of those bones come in that way as well. Um, you know, maybe we'll see them start to show up at like Wickapesset. Maybe they'll move over toward the Thames. Maybe they'll come around the other side and go through the race. But um, it's getting to be that time of year where you got to keep your eyes peeled. Uh, now I'm going to throw it over to Max from Fisherman's World and just uh, get a little rundown of what's going on out that way, out in the Western Sound. Take it away, Max. Hey guys, Max here again with another local fishing report. This week was all about the bluefish. We got big blues hammering bunker schools out in our deep water and a lot of like five to eight pound fish really shallow. Places like the obstruction buoy, 11B and 28C, you can find plenty of bluefish diamond jigging, chunking at night, and that sunset bunker school bite. They'll take anything from, you know, top water spooks, poppers, SP minnows, bucktails, you name it. The bass bite's slower. You really got to get out there first light, sunset, and definitely into the nighttime hours. Plug-in structure at night well, works well, and then guys chunking some deep water is working well. Fluke this week remains the same as last week. You really got to pick through a lot of shorts to find some you know, quality keepers. We've seen some fish to six pounds this week, but all the guys are saying they really got to work for them. I would try like can 26 behind cops, but try to get out in some deeper water. Can 24 behind Cockini Island and the OB buoy. Porgies, that's the name of the game too. Guys are catching them from shore, places like Sherwood Island and Calf Pasture Pier. And then guys on the boat are doing well. Always bring uh, clam chunks because that really increases your bag limit. The tuna bite is really going strong off Block and Montauk right now. This is perfect for all the small boats to get out there. Places like south of the gully, right off the windmills, Tuna Ridge, <clears throat> the Horns, and guys jigging the Ranger record doing well. We've heard of some yellows mixed in at the Ranger, but it's all about the bluefin. These fish are, you know, they're ranging from 20 to 50 pounds. There has been some overs and some giants in the mix. Thank you and good luck to all the anglers. One, two, three. Thanks, Max. I know you guys are offshore today. Good luck. Hopefully you and Lauren get into them good, and uh, we'll talk to you more next week. And if this is your first time watching the video, report video, or if you just come back every week for the reports, just make sure you give us a like and a subscribe down there so that um, we can build our following and so that you can know when we put up new stuff. Hit that little bell as well so you get that notification when we do. Uh, we're putting up new content all the time, and if you haven't been to the website, if you're not a subscriber to the magazine, head over to thefisherman.com and check out what we got. I mean, we've got so much free content there, and we cover a huge swath of the East Coast, you know, from Delaware all the way up to Maine. We have three editions that cover the fishing um, in all three of those zones. You get access to all three magazines. You get all the reports. You get all these videos from all three of us, all three of the editors. And uh, we've got contests, we've got tournaments, we've, we're giving away boats and kayaks and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so head on over and give us a look. 
Um, and uh, hopefully these reports do you well. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you had a good week of fishing this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.